I've tried many different ways to color grade my footage inside of DaVinci Resolve. And honestly, I've wasted hundreds of hours fiddling with complicated node trees, color space transformations, and just all sorts of malarkey that just doesn't really work very well. And in all of that, I have figured out for me the best and fastest way to color grade my footage inside of DaVinci Resolve. And I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. So keep watching, let's go ahead and check this out. So let me switch over to my main screen here. And I have a project pulled up with some test clips and some different things to illustrate how I do it fast, okay? Now, the first thing that you need to do when color grading your footage inside of uh, DaVinci Resolve is you need to establish a good baseline. To establish a good baseline, you need to convert your footage into the color space that you're working in. I'm gonna show you how to do that. If you look right now, my footage that I preview is being previewed in S-Log. You can see this, it's a gray, it's a gray image. It's not colorful, it's not contrasty, okay? And the old way to do things, the way that, that, that I've seen a lot of people recommend and different things is to apply on each clip when you import your S-Log footage, just bring it into your color tab and then apply a color space transform to get it into the correct color space, right? Uh, in this case, I'm working in S-Log, so I would, be I would be transforming it from S-Log 3 into Rec 709 because that's the color space that I work with. That's what my monitor's calibrated with. And it's, it's, it's pretty easy to do. You just uh, go into, um, you go into your library of effects inside of Vintage Resolve, go into Aces Transform, click and drag it. And then you can choose your uh, S-Log3 um, and then into Rec 709, boom, and it's converted. But the issue with that is that takes a few minutes to, to accomplish. So what I want to do is show you how to do that automatically. So I'm gonna switch back to my edit tab and I'm gonna go into my settings and color management. Now, inside of color management, you have your input color space. And what this is looking for, the value you need to put in here is whatever color space your camera's footage is recording in. In my case, I'm recording to uh, Sony S-Log3. So I'm telling DaVinci Resolve, hey, all of this footage is S-Log3. So whatever you're gonna transform it into, just make sure you understand that it's S-Log3. That's what I'm telling. And then I'm, I'm also telling DaVinci Resolve that my timeline is Rec 7, or my timeline color space is Rec 709 because that is the monitor that I'm working with. The monitor is calibrated for Rec 709. And Rec 709 is also very, very common to uh, resolve footage into because uh, it, looks great on most screens. Okay. SDR 100. That's just because I don't have an HDR monitor and I'm not monitor and I'm not working in HDR footage, right? My camera doesn't capture HDR and here's what we're looking for. So yours might look different, might have different values, but you just need to change it according to what you're working with. Now, my output color space is what I tell DaVinci Resolve to show to me while I'm working on it and base the clips on for while I'm color grading and exporting. So I have it set to, for example purposes, S-Log3. Now I'm gonna change that to Rec 709 and we'll do Gamma 2.4. Uh, they're basically the same. I think the Gamma just relates to like where it puts it uh, far as brightness is concerned, but I usually just put Gamma 2.4 because that's what works best for me. But if 2.2 looks better for you, by all means go for that. But I'm gonna put 2.4 and I'm gonna save that. Now check out what happens. Instantly, all of my clips now, if I click on this one, all of my clips are now being converted into Rec 709. So I don't have to do that for any of the clips anymore. It is done, okay? Now, you might be asking yourself, well, I have other cameras that are recording in other color spaces. Well, that's okay. All you have to do is set your time or set DaVinci Resolve to input your color space for the most common footage that you'll be using, because that'll save you the most time. And then for anything that uses a different color space, you can just go into it. And when you bring it onto your timeline, uh, you can, uh, there's, there's an option to bypass the color management. And so you can just do it for that. Cause I have a Sony 6400 right here that records an S-Log2. And so I want to bypass that color management. You can either right click and do it in this menu. I believe it pops up if you have the option to do so from this menu, or if you have it on the timeline, you can right click it and then do bypass color management. Okay, yep, it's right there. So 
Um, let's get rid of that and come back into here. So that's going to save us a ton of time because now check this out. If I just grab all this footage and bring it onto my timeline, then it's all converted into rec 709, just, just like that. And it makes it so fast and that'll give you the really good baseline for grading your footage. So, all right, let's check out now really quickly, the better way to grade footage. So as I mentioned before, the old way is to use all of these node trees and, or this node tree complicated, right? You've got your color space transform, which I just showed you in the last one or in, uh, just previously. Uh, and then you have your exposure, white balance, contrast skin, orange and teal, and whatever other node trees and different things you need to do for the majority of work that you would need to do that most people are going to be doing, right? If you're working with a DSLR, like a Sony camera, most people do not need to overcomplicate the color grading process. Okay. So we've established a baseline by converting all of our footage into rec 709. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to, uh, remove the grade on these clips because they're all going to have similar grades to them. So these have been converted, but they have not been graded yet. Now, my previous YouTube video, I actually talked a little bit about um, how to, um, no, sorry, it wasn't my previous one. It was the one before my previous upload. Um, in a previous video, I talked about how to use editable splines to very quickly um, grade your footage. And I was talking about speed. So I'm going to follow up with that. Okay, we're gonna go to our custom curves. We're gonna enable editable splines if it isn't already. And then we're going to adjust our S curve very quickly. So I want it to look nice and contrasty, look really punchy. All right, that looks good. I'm actually gonna brighten up some of the midtones a little bit by making this spline a little longer so it reaches into the midtones and then raise it up. You can see already looking much better. Next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna move my colors just a bit my orange my yellows i'll make slightly more orange and then bring my blues into the teal okay subtlety is the key when you're color grading you do not want to over color grade if you do too much it's gonna look bad see here's a perfect example if i move this over too much it's gonna look bad you want subtlety that's the key okay okay now that's done once i have that i'm going to actually select my reds and oranges and i'm going to raise the luminance just a little bit just like that perfect now you can see that's my rec 709 and that is my final grade now once i have the grade i'm going to right click and click grab still once i grab a still that gives me the option to apply that almost as a lut and i believe you can actually save these as lut files you can export them with display lut yep see there you go you can export it with display lut and you can bring this into future projects to apply and speed up your workflow significantly okay now what i'm going to do is these clips you can see in my color uh my color tab that or excuse me this uh kind of film strip area right here that anything with a little color box means that that has had some work done to it it has nodes it has adjustments but anything that's gray those ones have not been touched. So you can see these are gray. And I know that these are all similar lighting scenarios and uh, situations. So I know that this grade right here is gonna work for the following three. So I'm gonna hold shift on my keyboard, select those three. Then I'm gonna hover over this because this is the one I want to, want to apply. And it's gonna preview it for me and show me what it'll look like. And I'm okay, that's gonna look really good. So you can do two things. You can right click and you do apply grade. In this scenario, that's gonna work just fine for these clips, okay? But in some scenarios, you want to do a penned node graph. And the difference is if you apply the grade, it replaces the node with the grade. And that can either be a good thing or a bad thing. If you have noise reduction, if you have um, artificial motion blur, if you have stabilization, it can get a little wonky and replace uh, your clip with the previous, with the LUTs stabilization and different things. You, sometimes you don't want that. So that's why I generally append the node graph rather than applying the grade because appending it will add to the clip and it won't replace the transform properties. Okay. So 
that looks really, really good. And it generally worked pretty much across the board. This clip might be a little dark, so I'll maybe go back in, select it, and raise the shadows just a bit, but it's a high contrast clip, so it's supposed to be kind of that way. So, but then these are, these are done. These are graded. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate your time. If you're interested, I have a link in the description so you can sign up to my mailing list. I'm currently working on a DaVinci Resolve course that's designed to help you edit significantly faster and maximize your profits for whatever you use DaVinci Resolve for. So you can spend less time with fumbling with systems and buttons and things and more time just editing and getting your content out to the world. So if you're interested, be sure to sign up for that. Also, please like and subscribe to this channel. I would really, really appreciate it. Thanks.